Well, this was a job and a half. And I gotta tell you, after it's all done, I'm really, really glad I did it. And the one thing I'll tell everybody is that you can do this too. Um, I'm not exceptionally gifted at all in any kind of upholstery. I've never, ever, ever done any interior work in aircraft before. I have done a lot of interior uh, work in boats before. And, you know, of course, me, you've watched my stuff before. I'm always going to compare boats to airplanes. And yes, it's pretty similar. Um, but all in all, um, this, was, uh, this was a fun project to do. But having said that, I don't know if I'd ever do it again because it really was a lot of work. Um, I've watched a lot of other programs on people doing interiors and it is taken anywhere from six weeks to two months. Um, and then I've talked to some people who got it done in a week. Um, I got this interior done in about, I would say, 40 hours of working time. So. I did it over a period of three weeks and um, I was able to really knock it out. I had good help and I was well planned. And that's the one thing I will strongly encourage you guys to do is really plan everything out before you touch anything, before you cut anything, before you measure anything. Just plan everything out in your mind, what you're gonna do, write it down, and then realistically think how this is all gonna go together. So um, there was two ways or three ways I could have done these programs, is I could have made a bunch of really highly detailed programs on every single aspect of this, and I didn't really want to go through all that work, and I don't think you guys would really want to watch all that. So I just put everything together in one big time-lapse event, and I'm just, I'm just going to talk you all the way through it. So first, you just have to strip the interior out of your airplane. And I did it at the same time as my plane was getting its annual done, which really was a smart thing to do because the plane has to be stripped out anyway. And it's all cleaned out and everything's all inspected and that's the time to do it. So I pulled all the old insulation out and keep that old insulation because you're gonna need it to cut the new insulation for templates. And some of the old insulation I threw out because it was really nasty and gross. And then when I went to put in the new insulation, I was like, uh-oh. So um, that took a little time. Now the new insulation that they sent with the Airtex interior came off in, um, I mean, it, it couldn't have been any easier. As you see here, it was all in these, uh, it was all adhesive backed and it cut, I just cut it with a regular pair of scissors. And this stuff is so nice. My plane is a lot quieter. And um, it really, uh, you know, as you can see, it just went on kind of easy here. Now there were a lot of tight cuts around corners and there were a lot of places where you measure twice and cut once, which of course I didn't do. So there was a little bit of leftover and then there was some vacuuming and, you know, and some extra cleanup that I had to do. So um, make sure you clean this, give this a good clean, especially all the backing. Um, but after everything was cut, it just went on pretty easy. And as you see here, it just kind of slipped in and uh, there was, you know, it was actually kind of, it was actually kind of fun. And, um, you know, I was really pleased with how easy it went in. Make sure you have everything cleaned and make sure you have all the, um, you know, all that residue left off. I don't think you have to go crazy and bleach it and disinfect it or anything like that. Just get all the old crud off. Now there's going to be a lot of cutting around corners and a lot of cutting around, um, you know, hinges and things like that. So, you know, be prepared to take your time. Uh, I did this on, I believe, uh, just one Saturday. I think I got out there at nine in the morning and I think I called it a day around 1.30 or two, maybe three o'clock. Um, and, uh, you know, I was really, really pleased with everything that uh, went, you know, went, uh, or I was really pleased with how everything went. So now the actual panels. So these come as loose fabric. And then what you have to do is take your old panels and then you have to strip the old panels and then just get down to that bare sheet metal. Be really careful you don't damage that sheet metal. And as you see here, um, 
that uh, we took the old sheet metal, we cleaned it off, and then we just used all these little clamps that I got at Home Depot, Home Depot for like a buck, maybe a buck fifty a piece, maybe a little bit more. And um, then you just glue all that old section right onto them, right onto the uh, to the sheet metal. You can use the old marks where the old stuff was um, as uh, as markers. But take your time here, and this is the real time-consuming part because you want to, um, you really, you, you only get one shot at this. So as you see here, it um, uh, it looks pretty good. We got all the clamps on. The glue takes about 45 minutes to dry, maybe 40 minutes. So what we did is we got all this, we measured it, we glued it in place, made sure it all looked perfect, and then we just left it sit there. We went and got lunch, and then um, you know we put some weights on it there, some toolbox and uh, a toolbox, and then came back. So um, once that was done, uh, then it's really neat because watch how, look at how good this looks. There it is. And that's one of your panels. Now on the back side of this, you have the, um, these little nylon fasteners and the older ones were these steel, like these aluminum clips. And uh, those actually go into the airframe. And um, uh, I removed all those and I replaced them with nylon auto fasteners and uh, they did the job perfectly. So there's the old sheet metal that came from the old panel and you see how um, we had to kind of go, go through there, remove all the clips, make sure everything's good, make sure it's nice and clean. And then we went on there and just really did a good job of measuring everything out, gluing it all out. And before we put any glue into it, um, we you see here we, um, uh, we just measured it, we fitted it, make sure it's all cool, make sure it's gonna look good, make sure it's all size right, because once you put that glue in there, you don't get a second chance. Um, and uh, I, we, we actually didn't have to do any kind of crazy ungluing or do anything like that. So we measured it all, fit it right, and then we clamped it up. You see there we clamped it up, this is before any glue. And then um, after the glue went in, we put it in there and then you just mount it with those auto fasteners. And it looked a little baggy right there, but we smoothed it out and the armrest will go in there too. And that helps smooth it out a little bit. We could have got that a lot tighter. That was, um, you know, one thing, but once the back seat goes in and the armrest went in, it, uh, you couldn't even tell it was a little baggy. And you see there in the uh, baggage door that, um, you know, that matches. We just repeated the process with the other side. We just made it, uh, we just did a fitting run first before any glue went in. You see the clips over there. We took it out, we glued it in, and then we just fastened it right to the actual side of the airframe. And the cool part about it is that now it starts looking like a new interior. So um, a couple of other, you know, a couple little measurements, a couple little fittings here and there. And of course, we chose the coldest day in Florida that day <laughs> to do it. It was like 45 degrees, which is kind of crazy because it never gets that cold down here. So um, it was uh, it was really nice. Now, the door panels go in the same way. Um, and what uh, I did this, I think, by myself here. Once you kind of do one or two of these panels, then it gets kind of easier. And then once the panels were all in, then it was time to put in um, the actual plastic uh, rear window panel and then the two side panels. Now, with the two side panels, I ordered two new side panels from Airtex and I got them and they did not fit. They were, uh, it just didn't work. So I took the old ones and I repainted them just that kind of clamshell white there. And um, I patched a lot of holes and fixed it, up, fixed it all up. And actually, I'm really glad that I, I should have used the old, old ones. I, I regret buying new ones. And now I've got a pair of new ones in my house and I'm trying to sell them on eBay. I couldn't ship them back because they were $260 to ship back, which you know doesn't make any sense there. So, um, but these are the old ones, they're repainted and they actually look brand new. Now, if you do need new ones, reach out to me and I live in Tampa and you could come by and pick them up and I'll give you a fantastic deal because right now they're just taking up space in my, uh, on my front porch. So um, once it went in, the good part about using the old ones is all the screw holes were the same and um, you know, there, was no, uh, you know, there was no magic to putting them back in and you just, I replaced all the screws, which is one thing you wanna do, make sure you replace all the screws. And now this is the final piece and this is where it really starts coming together. 
and this this was actually really exciting. The last piece was the carpeting. So I went in there, I laid it down for a measurement there, and then I brought it back out and I installed all the Velcro strips, which were just adhesive, and they went in really, really easy. And then it starts looking like a new interior. And as you notice, I ordered a new back panel there, and that was, uh, that was from uh, Airtex Interiors. And that, um, you know, needed a little trimming, a little cutting, a little hole drilling and new screws. Um, and it went in there and now it actually starts looking like a brand new interior. So this is what it looked like just when I started to finish it. And now the new seats are in. There's a little bit of bagginess around the side there. I did end up fixing that um, uh, with the door handles when that, in, when that went in. And I just couldn't be happier. And also what's really cool is that it smells like a new car or a new plane. Um, I didn't do the headliner. Uh, that will come later, if at all, because I really don't look at the headliner and um, I, you know, I, I'm fine. Plus I wanted the project done. I didn't want this thing to drag on forever and constantly be doing it. I wanted to get back in and fly my airplane. So this is the quick version of how the interior went. The actual cost of the interior altogether was about, I would say $3,500. And it took really about, I would say 40 hours to actually install the new interior. And then the seats were probably another 10 hours on top of that, which is in a video before. And, um, you know, I strongly encourage you guys to do this because number one, you can do it. Number two, if you buy an old airplane and you get an interior for it, it makes it a new airplane and you really get to know that plane. One thing that bothers me is when I'm flying, I hear all these little rattles and I'm like, what is that? And little shakes and little, those little noises. Well, now once you put your interior in, a lot of those went away and the ones that are there, you know exactly what that is. Oh, that's a little piece I didn't screw in right. That's a little plastic in the back window that may be shaking a little bit. So that gives you a little extra confidence, but you really know your aircraft. So I strongly suggest you guys can do this. This is not a huge job. Get some help and plan this thing out. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. And I hope you learned something. So stay tuned also with 2214 Yankee because I have a major announcement coming up in the next, I would say the next few days. It's pretty cool what uh, news I have to share with you. Anyway, so if you're over 50, you know what to do.